Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. Today's card project is all about planning something great. It doesn't turn out, but you stay with it and emerge with a cute card project all the same. I had a great idea, or at least one that I thought was a great idea, and it didn't quite shake out the way I thought it was going to, but a little perseverance and well, cuteness ensues. Also, I have another picture of one of the panels that I created another card on my blog, and I have a link to the blog post below. But to see where it goes wrong and then, you know, goes kind of right, that card project is coming up next. So here's a look at the basic supplies that I'm going to use today, including, let's grab one of these friends, a block. A block that I can stamp my ink onto, right? Because what I'm going to do is do some stamp, wait, block stamping, but I'm going to try to do it through a stencil. And here's what I don't know. Do I need pixie spray for something like this? I'm going to roll the dice and see what happens. And you know, who knows? I, I did this once a long time ago when I first started making cards and I watched a Jennifer McGuire video, of course, and we, we all learned from Jennifer, but then if that works, I'll add a cute little critter and a greeting. So let's get started with the block stamping and then we'll see what shakes out. So I've got my block here and what size is this block? I guess if I were to put it in, it's, it's three, what is it? Three and a quarter or three inches by four inches. Yeah, about three by four, which is going to look great right in the center of this panel. Now, this is Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock. I prefer for something like this, the smoother side. And I'm just gonna drag across. Well, actually, I'm just gonna kind of smush. Okay. And yes, I may, you know, I may get a couple colors that overlap a bit and I, I don't, I don't know what it's gonna look like. So I'm gonna do that. Just kind of smush this down because I want this to be lovely Valentine colors. Did I get that right? Yeah, catch flamingo. Sometimes I put the wrong, <laughs> I put the wrong tops on. Have you ever done that? I did it recently and I uh, couldn't figure out why the color I was choosing looks so bad. Well, I found out. I'm going to throw in some spice marmalade just for some variety because variety is, no pun intended, the spiced marmalade of life. All right, that's all we're doing here, right? We're just we just got some, we just got some color. Now let's see what happens if I just go take my sprayer, right? Just a light mist, nothing too fancy and bring this down. And here's the tricky part. I'm going to take my stencil out. I'm going to lay it right here. Okay. And now I'm going to stand up and I'm going to press this down over the stencil. and press. Now I am just going to let, you know what I could do here? I'm going to take my Debbie tool and press. Now all you're looking at is my hands, which is very exciting. But I feel like, you know, if I use this Debbie tool, it's a little easier on my body. Now I don't know what this is going to look like. I'm going to let this transfer. So I feel like I need to walk away for a minute. I don't know how long to do this, right? Maybe I could put something heavy on it. I don't have anything heavy, so I'm just gonna let this sit, continue pressing, all right, <clears throat> like that. And, you know, we're gonna see what it looks like. I think this could look really cute. I think I'm just gonna lift it straight up. I'm gonna hold my stencil down. Oh my God! Okay. Nothing happened. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can take the image that I was going to do and press that down. All right, maybe that's what I was supposed to do. Okay. Let's let that go. I had that completely backwards. Let me go rinse off my stencil. I, I'm not always the brightest bulb on the strand, so let's lift this up and see. Well... Okay, take two. Okay, you can't see the pattern, but that's actually very cute. That said, let's try this method, okay? So I went ahead 
and I rinsed this sucker off. Okay, I'm putting it on a hard surface and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my little uh, stamping foam. So let's get the stamping foam warmed up. Oops, okay, we'll warm it up. Let's see, is this gonna work? We're gonna pop this down, hard surface, right onto here. Oh, pressing it in. <laughs> I think I gotta bring this little friend over again and press. Okay, that's that's a little easier for me. The nice thing is it does, you can kind of move it, groove it. I don't know what this is gonna do, but let's see, did we get an impression? Okay, we did. Kind of cute. See the impression? All right, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna we're gonna swipe on our colors. Uh, which way? Yeah, we'll go like that. Okay, swipe on the colors. Starting out with that gorgeous Kitsch Flamingo. I think we're gonna go into picked raspberry. This might have been what I was thinking I was doing, and yet I just I just wasn't. You know, I thought I was doing something cool. I just wanted to do something with the stencil and make sort of a, oh, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's part of my pad. Just wanted to make something kind of magical. Maybe this will work. I haven't done a lot of block stamping with these. Uh, okay, like that. Nice coating. Okay, maybe do I need, do I need a little more here with the kitsch? Maybe. Kind of get a little overlap in there, all right. Now, now, let's mist up this friend, okay? Activate that ink, bring in, well, maybe I will go on the nubby side. Let's see what happens on the nubby side. We're just, we're mixing it all up. And press. Again, I'm gonna bring in my stamp press just because that is much easier on my wrists to put a nice, I didn't get this very straight though, but we'll see. Like that. And now let's see what this one looks like. Boop. All right, well that's, <laughs> that's probably a little better, right? So you can see I have just my little bit of, well, that, that's a difference, that is a difference. And then of course with this, you just wipe it off, right? And then just heat it, heat it back up again to remove the pattern. So I'll just probably go rinse this off and yeah, look at that, comes right off. That's not bad. I don't think it's what I was really aiming for because I kind of lost some of it down there, but you know what? We're going to proceed. Now the best day of my life, I'm going to stamp one of these cuties, but here's the beautiful thing, I, I'm not going to color it. Now here's why, because I've already got enough color. And I always forget how nice, right? How nice, just like black and white can be. And you know, if you've got a lot of color going on, <laughs> get off my finger there. You, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about it, right? You can just do simple black and white. Get off my, do I wanna do though? I'm not sure yet about the greeting. Maybe I'll stamp everything in black and white because I think sending love would be cute too. All right, we're, just, we're gonna go all in with the black and white. Pick them up with the misty door. Okay, reposition my magnet here. And we'll just press these down and then just do a little, just a little prepping of the, of the stamps, get that residue that coating off now i'm going to use versifying claire it's just a very crisp black pigment ink now i am going to have to let this dry before i cut them out because this is not a fast drying ink but it's just it's like a one and done ink it's usually just stamps so beautifully i mean look at how well i don't think it's showing up quite as well on camera it's really taking the ink beautifully Bring it down, bring it to the paper, 
and press. And of course, if I have to stamp again, you know, the beauty of the Misty, same position every time. All right, let's just see how that all transfers in. No, actually, that is perfect. So a beautiful dark black ink. Now I'll just wait for it to get completely dry and then I'll grab the coordinating dies here and we'll cut them out. If you're ever feeling impatient though, you can always take a, a heat tool. I have this Ranger heat it tool that I bought last year because I wanted to have something that had a more diffused heat that was really geared towards just drying things as opposed to my Wagner heat tool that gets really hot and I use for embossing. So I have these both plugged in, laying on the floor of the craft slash dining room and kind of finding a use for both. So actually this isn't completely dry either. And I can also use it on my watercolor paper to sort of facilitate the drying of the orange, which I think got a little more saturated. All right, like that and go on the other side to kind of flatten. And I'm doing it on one of these silicone mats from Simon Says Stamp so it doesn't warp my mat underneath. This is kind of a nice thing to pop something on for heating things right on your work surface. I have to cut these dies apart and I thought I would show you my little, uh, my little beetalons. These are little wire snips. And once I cut dies, I don't, I don't like to leave the little pointies. So oftentimes I will also go like that twist and make it as smooth as I can. You can file them too if you have a, you know, a decent grit nail file. I rarely do. I just try to snip and trim as close as possible and then I will proceed with cutting the rest out. Got my dies taped into place and as I was taping them down I thought it might be cute actually to do Sending Love on black cardstock with white embossing powder. I may do that as an option off camera just to see if that gives a little pop of contrast, but we'll see. Cut these little friends out. See, this is my jam, right? Doing <laughs> no color critters. Once you've already made some mistakes, why do you want to take the risk? You know, no, that's just me and coloring. I, I don't love coloring, but <gasps> that's so cute. Okay, sending love. But yeah, I think that there's possibility here that, let's get my little pokey tool out that I might wanna do sending love in the reverse, okay? Ooh, I did a really bad job cutting that out. That's okay, because now I've got my critters. Let me do one more of these and with a little uh, emboss and white powder, and then we'll take a look at constructing the card. While I'm here, I am going to trim this panel down a little bit because I wanna have it framed out perfectly for my card base. And you can see how nice that looks. Uh, and that way, the fact that I didn't get it super straight doesn't really matter. The other nice thing about doing this, let's make sure that is straight, is that it's going to help flatten it a bit um, when we go through the die cut machine. So I'm just going to do a little bit up here at the top. I think I'm going to tack it down at the bottom too, just so it doesn't shift. And I will go, oh, look, see, it wants to shift. Get up there now. I'll go cut this out real quick and we'll proceed. So this is kind of interesting. I actually think this background that I felt was such a hot mess, that in and of itself is actually pretty cool. Now I've got some foam squares on the back here. You know, do I like this idea better because it has more color? Well, and I think I'm just gonna do like the three, you know, three hearts to kind of have boop, boop, boop like that. That's kind of cute, isn't it? Although, I think I should have put thicker foam on that. But anyway, actually, you know what? I think I will swap out the foam squares, but that's, I mean, that's a cute panel, but I do think having black gives that little pop, you know? So let's get a card base prepped. I'm gonna save this though, cause I think that's really pretty. And if I make something with it, uh, I'll be sure to show you. So let's put this on white. All right, let's move this out and bring in our piece of cardstock, and this is half a sheet of eight and a half by 11. So this is 11 by four and a quarter. I, I did a little filing of my bone folder, uh, the tip. One of you gave me the tip, <laughs> pun intended. And I think 
I think I can recl- well, no, you know what? I still think I don't quite have it the way I need it to be. So I'll work on that, but yeah, that's okay. All right, just throwing stuff all over. All right, let's give that a nice press like that. All right, lovely, no cracking. Tape this down because see how it pops up? Mama needs her card bases to be flat while we are working. Now I'm going to go grab some foam tape to put on the back of this. You know, even though this didn't turn out right with the crystal clear image, I still think it's a really interesting background. So when you're experimenting, you know, and if it doesn't turn out exactly as you had envisioned, you know, stay with it because look at how cute this is. I think this is cute anyway. All right, let's pop this down onto the card base. This is another reason why I love Tim's watercolor, Distress Watercolor cardstock because it's very bright white. And I just think that looks really cool with, you know, the cards that I do because I do so much stuff on a white base and I'm not that fancy. So I don't really need high end watercolor paper, you know? I mean, I, I just don't. Okay, let's see here. I changed the foam squares on the back here. So now they are as thick as what's on my little friend, okay? And I'm going to create that little cascade of the magic number of three, like that. I think this is so cute. Maybe this could come up a tiny bit. And here's the beautiful thing. Even though this part got kind of mucky muck, it doesn't really matter because that's where I'm putting the sending love. So I think this is what they call in the Bob Ross world, I think they call this a happy accident. All right, let's put this on first. Now, just for fun, I'll put a little bead of glue, whoop, pop that one on each foam square because these stick. When I, it took all my strength to peel them off, to peel the small ones that I had. Oh, but I need to be looking at it like this. Also, the reason I love reverse tweezers is, is just for this very reason. You can hover, right, and figure out side to side. Are we centered properly? I'm gonna say, yep, pop that down. That is so stinking cute. And I do think the black greeting with the white stamped embossing is the way to go. You know, just because otherwise it was a bit too monotonous, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully this is going to inspire those of you who love the little sets, right? But you, <laughs> you hate the coloring. I mean, I don't, Okay, I don't hate color and I don't hate anything about crafting, but I prefer not coloring because it's just, I am getting better, but it's just always a little too much thinking for me. And you know, you want your crafting to be fun. All right, let's place you right in the center. Shad, shad. I mean, of course, like you're gonna see great samples of this stamp set colored within an inch of its life. You're just not gonna see it from me. <laughs> and I think that's okay. And that's what's beautiful in the world of crafting, right? We all, we all answer the muse of our, of our own whatever. Something, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about now, but I think what I'm trying to say is you do you. Okay. You. Do you boo? Oh, and I guess you could boop, boop. I guess you could boop that, but we're gonna just go. Oh wait, did I have it go that way? I think I did, and now I can't remember. Uh, now it's stuck to my finger. All right, yes, we wanna angle it that way because then it just creates this nice little connection between the two things and boop, just like that. And that is my finished card project. Now, I think it's adorable, you know? Did the background turn out the way I had initially envisioned? No. Is that card super cute? Mm, I'm gonna put a vote in the yes column. And again, I'll figure out something to do with this. Gosh, even just that. Even just sending love with a single little heart. Okay, that would make a really clean and simple card. So be sure to check out my blog post as well to see what I ended up doing with this. And I'll have all of the links below the video.
Thanks so much for watching today. I hope it inspired you to try something new. And remember, you know, if you mess up or it doesn't turn out how you thought it might, my friends, it's only paper. Have fun and keep on crafting. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.